So I wanted to do a simple animation to celebrate the Olympics that I've been watching a lot recently. So I decided to make a quick little tutorial about how I did the animation and also show you how to achieve similar results with different kind of objects. So let's get started and let's get into it. Let's head on over to geometry nodes, select our basic cube here and just hit new, delete the group input of course, and we are going to just start off with this group output. For this setup, we can plug in basically any type of curve. So we could use any of these curve primitives or like text or, you know, even an SVG that we import. So first of all, I'm just going to show you how this works with a text node. So I'm going to add in a string to curves node and plug that into the geometry output. Now let's center our text out and just type in anything that we want. So I'm going to type in my channel name here and there it is. And this is how it looks right now. As you can tell, these splines or curves if you will are all fully closed curves and if i now add in a trim curve node which is the node we can use to actually tweak the factor of our curve so the length basically um you will see that nothing is really happening if we hop on over to the blender manual and look up the trim curve node you will see that there is this warning and it says currently the trim curve node does not support cyclic splines so what does this mean inside of blender basically we need a way to tell blender that this curve is open open somewhere so not fully closed and to do that we can just simply add in the set spline cyclic or cyclic whatever take it in there and make sure you um, have this disabled so now if we increase this end value you will see our animation is doing something and if I toggle this it's just back to normal doesn't do anything anymore so let's just leave that deselected and let's work with this now if you can tell this is a pretty huge gap and that's basically because we need more points and we can use the resample curve node to do this and what it did now is basically told blender okay each of these splines is just 10 points um in uh in its entire length and as you can tell this is looking uh, pretty weird um, but if we increase this number to a very high value so for example 2000 you will see that it basically looks normal again with the exception that this still works because it's still an open curve so not a cyclic curve but a uh non-cyclic curve or cyclic curve so this still works now let's give our text some depth to work with so a um, let's add in a curve to mesh node plug that in here and for the shape here i'm just going to add a curve circle take that in there plug it in there and see how that looks now i'm going to set the re resolution to four and just decrease the size here and that's what we get okay so this is looking all right i guess but i want some flat surfaces up top so how can we do this we can actually just delete the curve circle and work with a different curve primitive called a quadrilateral now this exists out of several basic shapes like a rectangle a parallelogram that's a very difficult word to say <laughs> a trapezoid and a kite so if we just use the rectangle and take that in here and take that into the profile curve and make this way smaller so like 0.15 for both of these you will see that we now have nice flat edges but the shading is still looking a bit weird and that's because blender somehow thinks that these shapes are shaded smooth and they don't need to be so instead i'm just going to use the split edges node and plug that in between here so it's now all smooth like this if we now decrease the width here so say something like 0.05 we get these nice crisp lines and we are still completely able to animate our text in and out of our scene so let's go ahead and do that open up a timeline window and let's go over to frame one, hover over our end value, set it to zero and hit I. Now select our actual trim curve node and select our geometry nodes object. So we can actually see the keyframes within our timeline. Hop on over to frame 70 and set this value to one. Now hit I again, and we basically have created our text animating in. Now 15 frames later, I'm gonna take this start value, which is now at zero. I'm just gonna set it uh, as a keyframe as well. So hit I and then 20 frames later. So 105, I'm gonna set this value to one and hit I again. So what we have now is the text is animating in and it's animating out as well. I'm gonna end our animation at 120 frames and I think I'm gonna set the FPS to 30. And in here, I wanna select all of our keyframes. So select them, hit T and choose the cubic easing. And also let's hit control E and choose ease in and ease out. And it should give us a nicely uh, animated smooth motion to work with. Okay, so this is the basic premise of our entire setup like this. 
So the entire animation is basically done, if you will. I'm just going to show you real quick how to use either an SVG imported logo and maybe create something unique like the Olympics logo you saw in the beginning. So let's just delete the string to curse node here. And I'm going to add in a frame real quick. Make sure these nodes are in there. We can actually have some overview of what's going on. Let's go over to the preferences and into add-ons and look up SVG. Make sure you have the import export scalable vector graphics enabled. And now let's hop on over to file import and choose SVG. Now I have it over here. Choose whatever SVG you have. Uh, there are several resources online where you can find free uh, to use SVGs. In this case, I use the Blender logo. So just import that. And over here, we got the curve and another curve. And I'm just going to solo these with the forward slash on the numpad. And you will see this is our curves object. I'm going to hit control plus J to actually merge these together and tap into edit mode to get all of these points available. Now let's hit A to select all of them. Right click and hit subdivide. Now I'm going to open up this menu here and give it about 250 cuts, basically 250 subdivisions, giving us a lot of points to work with. Now you will see that the filling in between all of these lines is black, basically meaning that our object is being filled in and also basically meaning that our lines are uh, cyclic. So instead, let's open up this curve menu here and hit toggle cyclic. We should remove the insides of our logo and make sure that these lines are actually cyclic. Final step is tab out of edit mode, go to the object menu, into set origin and hit geometry to origin aligning our logo with the center there. Now I'm just going to pull this outside of our camera view here and instead select our cube, which is the geometry nodes workspace and drag in this curve node over here. So this is the object info node for our curve and it has one output, which we are going to use called geometry. So let's plug that in here and see what happens. Okay, so nothing happens. And why is that? Let's hover over this eye here and see what it says. It says input geometry has unsupported type mesh. All right, so that means that the output over here, which we can check, is called geometry. And we need a curve output, but we can't change that over here. So we need a node to fix that for us. In this case, there's a very convenient node called mesh to curve instead of curve to mesh. And if you just plug that in between here, um, something should be happening. Now you're not seeing anything. And if you check up here, you will see we are still in local view. If we hit the forward slash on the numpad again, we are now outside of our local view. Check over here and we can see the logo. It's just looking a bit weird. So let's add in a transform node, scale it up like, I don't know, 30 times or so. And let's see over here if we completely have it. Yep, there it is. So our logo is now completely within our scene and everything is working fine. Pretty cool. Now I'm just going to set up the background real quick. So add in a plane up here, just pull it down on the Z axis with G and Z, scale it up with S and go back into your camera view. Now into rendered view, we go add in a area light, which we are going to pull up. So G and Z again, and just pulling it up to about, I don't know, five meters or so. Go into the menu over here, set the size to five and the power to about a thousand. And now we should be getting a nice result in there. I'm just going to select the plane here, add in a new material, which I'm going to call BG. And I'm just going to give this a base color. And in this case, I think orange is fitting because our Blender logo normally is orange. So there you go. That works nicely. So the final option, or actually the thing I created, first of all, was the Olympic rings animation. And how I did that is actually very simple. I took a curve the circle node and plugged that into the resample curve node. Now let's crank up the resolution to 512, which is the maximum amount. And it should look almost like it's completely closed. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Now I am going to change the width for this one back to 0.15 over here. And I'm going to add in a transform node and plug that in between here. Select all of these nodes, including the frame and duplicate it four times. Now plug it in your curve circle node to each of these. Add in a join geometry node and combine all the outputs of the transforms. All right, so the top one will be the top left ring. So I'm going to move this guy to the left 2.5 meters. So negative 2.5 on the X. Now for the bottom left ring, I'm going to move it exactly half of that. So negative 1.25. And I'm also going to move it down negative 1.25. Let's just copy this value real quick. And we now have three rings already set up. This is the middle ring, so we won't touch that. And this will be our bottom right one. So I'm going to move this one down on the Y axis 
negative 1.25 meters as well. And I'm going to move it to the right. So positive 1.25 meters, effectively taking it over there. Now, the final ring is the top right ring. I'm just going to move it 2.5 meters to the right. All right, so we have all our rings set up and we have one of them animated actually. So let's go ahead and animate the rest of them. So I'm going to select the original trim curve node, which has the animations, which we can tell by this green stuff over here. And I'm going to select all the other ones as well. So I have five of them selected. Now I'm going to go to frame 85, which is the part where they start to fade away. I'm just going to animate those first. So I'm going to hit I on all of these. Make sure they're all yellow afterwards. So, yep, yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, now let's go to frame 105 and just take all of these to one and hit I again. So now we have all of the rings fading out at the same speed and they're gone. Now for the fading in, we're going to do something different. I'm just going to start every ring at a different frame. So at frame 10, I'm going to take the uh, bottom left one, which is this one. First of all, I'm going to set the end value to zero, hit I, take this to 70, set it to one and hit I again. Now let's take the top left one, go to frame 20, set this to zero, hit I, let's go to 70, take this to one and hit I again. Now let's repeat all of these steps for the last two. All right, so now we have all of them going in at separate times and they're fading out at the same time. Final thing though is if we go up here, we have this Z rotation for each of these circles. Now you won't be able to tell because they are actually sort of closed, but if I change this right now, you will see these circles actually rotating. And I want to change all of these randomly. So I'm going to take a hashtag frame, which is a driver, which will calculate the rotation by the frame. So just plug that in. That's quite fast. So I'm going to divide this like by five or so. Now just find a random number for each of these. So now they all have different speeds and it gives them very random look, making it look uh, more unique, more interesting to look at. I think this looks pretty cool and we are left with a pretty decent animation. So I want to point out that the project file for this video is available on my Patreon. Go check it out, please. And I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Special thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel. 